Hello? Need to be working. Hello, everyone. Just getting started here. Let's connect up a few things here. All right. So how's everybody doing today? Let me know in the chat how you're doing, where you're calling in from. I'm located in central Canada here, so we're just getting ready for our nice cold winter to start. We got about four or five inches of snow in the last week, so it's definitely cooling off uh, right around freezing mark. So we definitely enjoy our enjoy our short summers here, um, but we're uh, done with that and getting ready for winter. Hello, James. How are you doing? So we'll just give uh, a few more minutes here for uh, a couple more people to join. But while we're waiting, um, maybe let me know in the chat uh, the types of projects you work on, uh, what type of uh, projects you work on, the, the role you have on projects, where you're from. Let's just see uh, who's calling in and what kind of experience we have on some projects here. So I've been doing this stuff for a while. Um, a decade or two trying to figure out commissioning and uh, I figured out a lot of the things that work and a lot of things that don't when we're planning for commissioning on projects and that's why I do these webinars is to help other people understand this complex topic of commissioning because it's so critical on projects to be able to finish them of course during commissioning so I do these webinars every Friday and glad that you're here. So let me just share my screen. Okay, that looks like it's there. And then that one. Awesome, so it looks like we're working here. Okay, great. So let's get started. Today, we're gonna to talk about how to plan and execute capital project commissioning so that you can stop losing time at the end of your projects. You're about to get the number one project management framework to lead and manage commissioning. Now, this discussion is meant to be interactive. So I've got the chat up here like James and Shane are doing. Um, shoot any comments you have in the chat. I'll watch for your questions. Ask a question at any point during the presentation. I'll try and get it answered. We will have a Q&A at the end as well. So if we don't get your questions answered, we definitely will at the end. Now, I've been using the commissioning project management frameworks that we're going to talk about today on several projects. I've used them in the power industry, working on generation and transmission projects. I've used these frameworks in the aerospace industry, building satellites and rockets for the Canadian Space Agency. I've used these frameworks in the water and wastewater treatment plant industry, expanding and upgrading uh, wastewater tra treatment plant uh, near where I am here. I'm also on the organizing committee for the Commissioning Professional Society, and we host an annual event once a year uh, where a bunch of uh, the best and the brightest commissioning people in the world gather in one room to discuss the challenges being faced by the industry and how we can elevate the importance of commissioning on projects. So it's a great event. You should definitely check it out. Now, I'm not the only one getting results with this approach to commissioning. Through our training, I've helped several other people get the same results. For example, Sheldon or Jonald or Kale. After they've joined our programs, they all tell me that this was an eye opener. They had no idea what was really involved to plan for commissioning. They tell me after they've completed our programs, this is the most interesting and applicable course they've taken in years with lots of practical information. This isn't theoretical stuff. They tell me that this is the first commissioning explanation they've found that fully matches with what really happens at site. And that's because it is. It's based on real world experiments, experience. This isn't textbook stuff. So I know this stuff is good. I know it's helping a lot of people and it can definitely help you and your projects too. So just to be clear, though, this is not 
technical commissioning. If you're here looking for specific details of how to do electrical high pot testing, or if you want to know the specifics of how to do test and balancing for HVAC, or you're looking for the specific pipe flushing standards for the food processing industry, you're not going to get that here. That's not what this presentation is about. But technical commissioning is not actually what's missing on projects, though, is it? There's a lot of smart people working on projects, and they'll get the testing completed one way or the other. What's missing on projects are the project management aspects that are supposed to go around the technical commissioning. What's missing are the systems and controls to manage commissioning starting much earlier in projects. Let's look at a simple org chart. There's typically three main functions on a project, right? You need, you need to get it designed, you need to get it built, and you need to make sure everything works at the end. Or depending on your contract structure, if design and construction are part of the same EPC contract, um, whatever your contract structure is, these are the three main functions on most projects. Too often though, commissioning is tucked under one of these existing groups. Maybe the design group is responsible for commissioning or the construction group is uh, tasked with trying to figure this stuff out and make everything work at the end. Uh, where commissioning is just left as a subactivity to one of these groups. Projects are often structured this way right from the beginning in contracts, and they're already in trouble before they even start. There is typically someone responsible to manage design. There's often, and in all cases, someone responsible to manage construction. There's an entire industry dedicated to construction management. But where are the project management processes to lead and manage commissioning? On a lot of projects, they don't exist. There's a gap in the industry. Commissioning is really still in its infancy. Of course, we've been doing commissioning for decades, but it's only recently that commissioning is being recognized as its own discipline and recognized as a primary function to successfully complete projects. Some industries, of course, are ahead of others in this regard. If you look at the aerospace industry, they're the most advanced. You can look at some of the other content I've generated for commissioning of the James Webb Space Telescope, that stuff has to work. So they've got very sophisticated commissioning processes. The oil and gas industry is quite advanced as well. There's significant safety hazards and logistical challenges working offshore. And the oil and gas industry has progressed uh, fairly far to figure out how to plan and manage commissioning. But commissioning as a discipline is only now starting to emerge in several other industries. Now, commissioning is complex, both the technical aspects and the project management aspects are complex. And I will say, you can't learn technical commissioning in a course. It's, it's just too difficult. It's too dangerous, right? The only way to learn technical commissioning is to be part of an experienced team to get that hands-on experience, right? There's too many hazards. You can't read, the, read about this stuff in a book um, on the technical aspects of things. There isn't anyone that's going to tell you how to do a high voltage short circuit test, for example, on a large synchronous condenser, and then send you on your way and see how you do. Not going to happen. You have to be part of a team that knows how to do this safely to see how it's done and get that hands-on experience. It's just like a kid riding a bike. She's not going to learn to ride a bike from reading a book. She's got to get on the bike. She's got to get the bumps and bruises if she wants to figure it out. Now, there is a distinction between technical commissioning and commissioning project management. They do require different skill sets. And when it comes to commissioning project management, you can learn this and you must learn this in advance before trying to lead or manage commissioning. I've seen it too many times. Just last year, I was working on a project and one of the contractors brought in someone to lead commissioning. He was a smart enough guy. He understood all the technical aspects, but he had no understanding of the commissioning process and didn't know how to plan and manage commissioning. Well, he only lasted two months on the job before they fired him. In these roles, you're expected to lead and deliver, right? There's no time to learn on the fly of how to plan this stuff and execute um, for successful commissioning. When the project is falling behind, you can't figure this stuff out on the fly. It doesn't take long to get left behind. Compare it to a surgeon. Do you want your surgeon who leans over to the nurse and whispers in their ear, what do I do? Of course not. You want the surgeon who has studied the process and knows exactly what to do, including when something goes wrong. 
It's way too risky to figure out how to manage commissioning on the fly. There's just too much time and money at stake. And it's not reasonable to expect the technical guys to figure this stuff out. By the time they're involved, it's already too late in the project. And they've got their own tasks to complete, their own expertise to execute the specific hazard, uh, hazardous tests on site. And by the time they're involved, the bad decisions are already made earlier in the project. And all they can do is point out the mistakes that were made on projects. In the case of project managers, they need, no, need to know how to properly plan for commissioning. And I would honestly say this is their most important function on projects is to know how to finish projects to make sure that they can finish actually on time and on budget. But it's not project managers fault that they don't understand the commissioning process either. This stuff isn't explained in any project management literature that's out there. Completing projects during commissioning is not well understood and it's complex. A lot of people aren't familiar with this process. So this is the gap that exists in the industry. And this is the missing uh, commissioning project management processes that need to be on projects. When these processes are missing on projects, it no, it's no wonder that projects are late and over budget. This is the gap that we help you fill. This presentation is for project managers that need to understand how to finish projects during commissioning and also for technical commissioning experts who want to move up in projects and lead or manage commissioning. Now, with the gap that exists in the industry, when there's no systems and controls to manage commissioning, projects are just gambling. You have no way to affect the outcome of your project. You roll the dice and hope for the best. It's a crapshoot. I'm going to show you how to finish projects during commissioning with much more predictability. And at the end of this presentation, if you'd like some more help, I'll show you how with our Commissioning Academy program. So if this all sounds interesting, then I'm glad you're here. I want to share some statistics with you that are quite concerning, though. This is Professor Bent Flivberg. He's from the University of Oxford. He has a database of over 16,000 projects that he's compiled over the last couple decades. He's also written a book. It's called How Big Things Get Done. And if you haven't read it, you should. It's a great book. Professor Flivberg's research shows that only 8.5% of projects are on time and on budget. That means over 90% of projects are late and over budget. That's terrible. Maybe that's not surprising, but the construction industry has a terrible track record. It's worse than the weather forecasting industry. Somehow they're always wrong. There are lots of contrib contributing factors, of course, to the underperformance on projects. There's civil challenges of uh, heavy civil construction and underground conditions. There's procurement delays, getting equipment to site when it's needing and coordinated all the supply chain, construction productivity on some projects. There's huge, vast amounts of civil work to complete for placing concrete, and there's productivity challenges there as well. There's lots of challenges on projects. However, the complexity of completing projects during commissioning is one of the main contributions to delays when there are no systems and controls to manage commissioning. I'm going to show you how to do this on your projects so you can beat these odds and improve your project success. So let's check in. Is this making sense? Does any of these statistics from the University of Oxford, does this concern you? If you have any questions, let me know in the chat. I'll uh, get your questions answered. So when I give this presentation, the first thing a lot of people want to know is what to do. They just want to get the checklist, give me the procedure. I want to know the step-by-steps of exactly how to commission, say, a combustion gas turbine or whatever their specific project is. And... When I get these types of questions, there's a little bit more to it than that. You're not going to get the six-page document that says, okay, do this, 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 and this. When I get these types of questions, I already know these people are in trouble on their projects. So first, before we talk about what to do, we need to address the problems of what not to do. We know that problems are having, we know that projects are having problems. We know this because Professor Bent Flivberg's data tells us this. We know that nine out of 10 projects are late and over budget. Projects are losing time during commissioning and they're missing deadlines. But why is this? Why are projects struggling? We need to address these problems before I teach you what to do. 
There are three common mistakes that are made on projects. And just by fixing these three mistakes, you can see huge improvements on your projects. So what are these three mistakes? The first mistake is leaving commissioning to the end of projects. We've been told for a long time that commissioning takes place at the end of projects. You need to finish construction and then test everything at the end, right? Makes sense. But this is actually not true. This is, of course, what most projects do. They roll the dice at the end. And maybe you've had this experience. But this is what leads to problems on projects. In fact, to be successful, the commissioning process starts right at the beginning of your projects, as early as your feed processes or even earlier. When commissioning is left to the end, there's no way to be proactive. All problems are left to the end of your project, and there's no time to recover. It's exactly like Stephen Covey says in his book, Seven Habits of Highly Successful People. Habit number two, begin with the end in mind. We must be doing this on capital projects and having commissioning project management processes right from the start. There's no way to successfully finish projects unless you start preparing in advance. All projects that have ever finished on time and on budget, this is what they're doing. They're implementing commissioning project management right at the beginning of projects. And I'm going to show you how to do this. Mistake number two is having commissioning as a subactivity, just like we showed in that org chart earlier. Many projects, one group is tasked with commissioning. The commissioning is part of construction or commissioning as part of the design group's responsibility is make the stuff work at the end. But this never works. Commissioning is not an individual effort. Commissioning must be treated as its own discipline with all project groups involved. In football, it's not just the quarterback's responsibility to win the game. He needs everyone to play their part. All positions on the field have a role to play, and everyone contributes to get the win. Commissioning requires a one-team approach. All subsystems must come together as one functioning plant process or one functioning system, and project groups must do the same. They must all come together at the end of co for commissioning of the project to make it successful. All groups have a role. Construction groups are involved, maybe in some of the, the vendor startups or uh, pre-commissioning activities to get individual pieces of equipment up and running. Design groups are involved, often as the subject matter experts that know the design intent and how this stuff is supposed to function. Consultants are involved. The client is involved. Everybody comes together as one commissioning team for one commissioning process to get the project in service. So with one commissioning process, it doesn't matter which group you're part of. If you're part of any of those groups, we're all following one commissioning process on projects to bring our systems in service. There's one process to follow, one team approach, and one final finish of the project. Unfortunately, when commissioning is a subactivity to one group, this leads to a conflict of interest. You can't have the fox guard the hen house. Think about it. On projects, there's lots of money involved. There's cost pressures. There's schedule pressures. And when groups are under pressure to deliver, it's it's human nature. It's not anyone's fault to try and cut corners and achieve their objectives, right? You can't fault anyone for this. It's just how projects are structured. So for this reason, you can't have one group verifying their own work. All projects that are successful with commissioning, they have one team with everyone involved, one commissioning process, and one final in-service date. This is, of course, extremely challenging because projects are naturally divided up by the contracts that are awarded and everyone belongs to different organizations. So how do you keep everyone aligned for successful commissioning? Well, I'm going to show you how to do that. Mistake number three is still using paper and spreadsheets to manage commissioning. Many projects, they're still doing this. They're using um, customized spreadsheets to manage their commissioning process with paper sign-offs or custom spreadsheets to manually track commissioning progress and efficiencies and while this used to work 20 years ago, projects are far too complex for that to work anymore. There's too many documents, there's too much information, and it's just impossible to keep track of everything manually. We need to be making faster decisions on projects, and we need real-time data to make those informed decisions. We can't wait until Friday's spreadsheet update to get the updated information. We need access to the information right now. So there's, if, if we have a plan in the morning and it needs to be completed, completed by three o'clock, we need to know that activities are progressing. We're not going to wait till Friday to see how the week went. Even if you've used commissioning software in the past, there's so many better options that are on the market and are available now. And there are actually over 20 different software vendors on the market. Each has its own 
pros and cons. All are flexible to meet your project specific needs. And we review how to select the right one for your projects in our Commissioning Academy program. Some of them are better suited to other industries and uh, we go through kind of the pros and cons of, of each one of them. So if you don't already have my commissioning management software list, you can go to learncsu.com and there's a link at the bottom there where you can get direct, direct access to the list and you can see all the 20 plus vendors that are listed on there and uh, hopefully find one that can meet your project needs. So when you get these software systems in place, the CMS software helps you plan and manage the work for commissioning. It helps you keep track of all the big details and all the small details so that nothing gets missed. It's what's used to manage your gated commissioning processes once you establish what those processes are. And you're able to make real-time data-driven decisions rather than guessing on your projects when you have these systems set up properly on your projects. It's not reasonable to expect that everyone on projects is going to understand commissioning. It's, it's complex, right? Um, I see a question from Temesin. Are we going to get trained using any of these softwares? So there's lots of software that's on the market and it's our training programs aren't tailored specifically to any one particular software because it depends on the industry you're in and uh, the software that you're using. But the concepts are all the same in how uh, the software is used to model your commissioning process. And a lot of them, um, I've used several of them. They all do this very similar for taking your tag lists and systematizing projects and um, building your uh, commissioning workflows along with your schedule and how this is all tracked and detailed for uh, punch list walkdowns, completions, and deficiency tracking. So they're all very, very similar. So if you understand one, you can kind of use another. But it's not reasonable to expect that everyone on projects understands commissioning, right? Everyone has their own strengths that they bring to the project, and we need them to focus on their skill sets and how they contribute to completing the project. But commissioning is complex, and not everyone's going to get to the same level of detail in commissioning that some of uh, the commissioning experts are working in. However, we still need a tool that allows everyone on the project to see how their role contributes to a successful finish of the project. Everyone needs to understand very clearly what they need to do and when they need to get it done for commissioning to be successful. And CMS software is that tool to guide the team to a strong finish when it's set up and used properly. Now, software is still not the magic solution that's gonna solve all your commissioning problems. It's a tool, of course, right? And it's used to model your commissioning processes. Out of the box, it's generic, and it, I would say it's generally useless. You need to understand these commissioning fundamentals if you want to put the software to good use. If you're missing commissioning project management, you'll probably wish you'd never see, seen any of these commissioning softwares because it's complex. Um, I do talk to a lot of commissioning experts that are concerned that project teams are becoming too reliant on the software. Nobody actually understands commissioning to set the tools up properly. And I see a lot of projects and how they've applied and used these tools is, yeah, it's it's a good start, but it's not really being applied and helping the project. So I just don't want you to go away thinking that this software list is your final answer and will solve all your commissioning problems. Because if you try to get one of these set up on your project without having well-defined commissioning project management processes, you'll get very frustrated with your software. And maybe some of you have even had this experience and uh, you'll probably wish uh, you've never seen the software and you'll probably actually stop using it. <laughs> if you've used, say, a package, say, like five or 10 years ago, maybe that was your experience. But a lot of the new software systems that have been developed re recently, they're actually quite good. So these are the three most common mistakes on projects. Not starting with the end in mind, having commissioning as a sub-activity to a design group or a construction group, and still using paper and spreadsheets on projects. And these are why projects are struggling with commissioning. And if you fix just these three problems that you're having on projects, you'll already make huge improvements on your projects. When projects are making one or more of these three mistakes, it's because they lack a project management approach to commissioning. And this is what we refer to as cowboy commissioning. Your commissioning processes are inefficient. You miss deadlines. Everything is unplanned and unorganized. And it's the reason that commissioning is a shit show at the end of your projects. 
It's easy to avoid these mistakes with commissioning project management processes, and I'm going to show you how. So your project can avoid cowboy commissioning and uh, finish much more efficiently. So any questions so far, shoot them in the chat. Is this all making sense? Let me know and I'll get your questions answered. So what are the symptoms of cowboy commissioning? What are the problems that you might be experiencing on your projects? One of the symptoms might be that your transition from construction to commissioning is disorganized and incomplete. Everybody's definition of done means something different. The commissioning guy's definition of done means something different than the construction guy's definition of done means something different than the client's definition of done. And it's because there's a lot of details involved in what needs to be finished and what's required for commissioning. With this unclear transition from construction to commissioning, it can become quite disorganized, incomplete. And this is what leads to a lot of snags during commissioning that cause constant delays. And it might not even be big things. It could be just a whole bunch of small things. Is There's a missing cable, a rolled wire, a missing setting, or all these little things. But when you're constantly encountering all these little delays, they add up. It's like a death by a thousand cuts and uh, you just get bogged down when you get into the details of commissioning. And while some earlier small details might have not seemed important during design or during construction, all the details definitely matter during commissioning when we're trying to make this stuff work. And if there's just lots of little things missing, then that's how we get bogged down. Um, some of the other problems is it's, it's all too common on projects, right? Where commissioning is squeezed into half the time. You're working 16 hour days to try and recover and do twice as much work in half the amount of time to meet deadlines on your projects. You're losing time during commissioning and you're missing your project and service date. All very common problems on a lot of projects. These problems are likely caused by a lot of these mistakes is you're missing commissioning project management processes and controls on your projects starting much earlier in your projects. It's not because you're missing technical commissioning. The project will finish eventually. The technical guys will get it figured out, but it's because you're missing the project management frameworks that are supposed to go around commissioning starting much earlier in projects. Another mistake is there's no subsystems-based approach starting early in your projects during feed. There needs to be a subsystem approach that starts during design, goes right through construction, through commissioning, and aligns exactly with your project startup sequence. And this is how projects are successful, is when they start with this subsystem-based approach early in projects and have this go through all phases of the project. Some of the mistakes is you're likely losing track of details, all the big details, all the small details, and it's during commissioning when the details really start to matter. If you're losing track of all these small items, they pile up at the end, which causes lots of problems during commissioning. And there's maybe some people on the project that know what these details are, but without some sort of comprehensive method to track all the details, not everyone is aware of what is required. So they're not even aware that you need that VFD setting at that point in time for commissioning. Um, maybe the commissioning experts know that, but without conveying that to everyone else on the project, nobody knows what they need to do and what they need to have ready for successful commissioning. All right. So there are three parts of the commissioning project management framework. There are the planning frameworks, there's the construction completion frameworks, and there's your on-site commissioning and startup processes. These make up the integrated commissioning framework. When the integrated commissioning framework is established early on your projects, your on-site commissioning becomes much easier. You're able to complete commissioning with ease. There's no delays. There's very few snags on projects. You have confidence that you can meet deadlines on your projects. You save time and money on projects by completing projects much more efficiently. And most importantly, you're able to deliver quality systems that can be used for decades of reliable operation. So Fernando is asking EWP, CWP to system mapping should be part of the overall schedule preparation to identify system commissioning sequence early in projects. Absolutely, you're 100% right. And that's one of the main reasons that the commissioning guys need to be involved early in projects is for that project systematization component to define 
um, and divide up the the tag list in your project. What each tag piece of equipment belongs to which particular subsystem that organizes the design activities, the construction activities, so that everything's being completed in the right order to line up with what's required for commissioning at the end of the project. And this, these details need to be aligned in your contracts because this is how it's conveyed to your installation uh, contracts is what are the subsystems and when are they required in what order of completion so that it aligns with commissioning. If that's missed in contracts, then good luck trying to get that changed after the fact. Um, of course, the contractor can make that change and change the their construction sequence, but there's always a cost to do that, right? Um, and to be expected, right? They've planned out their work uh, in a specific way. If after the fact you want to try and change something, well, that disrupts their their planning and coordination and uh, the costs and claims start to pile up, right? However, when you're missing these commissioning project management frameworks, it may seem like you're making progress during design and during construction until commissioning starts, of course, right? Nothing works, things are missing, constant delays, you're losing time during commissioning, you're scrambling at the end to try and get everything finished, and you're panicking just to try and keep your head above water as you likely have executives breathing down your neck and they're demanding results and to get the project finished to some arbitrary and service date that probably doesn't even make sense anyways, right? You end up with cowboy commissioning and it's a scramble at the end of your project to try and finish all this stuff. Without commissioning project management frameworks on projects, what do most project teams try to do to fix this? Well, they dump everything on the end of the, at the, they dump everything on the commissioning guys at the end, right? Let them sort it out. They treat them as this black box or the wizards that are going to show up at the end of the project and try and make everything work. 16 hour days are common, seven hour, uh, seven days per week to try and recover. And everyone's got their fingers crossed, hoping uh, at the end of the project that everything will come together at the end. Well, we all know that hope is not a plan, right? The blame game starts, finger pointing of what went wrong, and the claims start to pile up. Uh, and I guess the plan is just to fight everything out in court and, and try and get everything finished later. It's a, it's a terrible way to finish projects. This is hardly a good approach in how projects are going to be completed. There is a better way, and that's by implementing these commissioning project management frameworks early in your projects and establishing the defined processes to follow and the specific controls to monitor, monitor progress of your project for commissioning. That's way there's no surprises. It's an easy to follow process right from the beginning of projects that everyone understands having the project management controls to make informed decisions and affect the outcome of your project. Commissioning goes much smoother and there's no delays or snags. Is this sounding good? Um, is this making sense? Is this actually sounding too good to be true? What's been your experience on projects? Uh, let me know. Okay. So these are the details of what's included in each framework. But first, why is it called integrated commissioning framework? Well, that's because commissioning project management must be integrated into all early stage of projects during your procurement phases, during your design, during construction, during your construction completions, commissioning needs to be involved in all areas of the project. Remember, one commissioning process and one commissioning team, regardless of which group you're part of. It's the only way this all comes together at the end of your project. James is saying, sounds good. Wish I would have implemented commissioning first on my roof project. Yeah, and that's the thing. Um, without understanding this stuff in advance, it's hard to know um, how the end of your project or kind of some of those lessons learned, right? You start everything and on really big projects, if it's a year or two years, you can make some of these decisions or plan some of these things for commissioning, but you're not actually going to know for a year or two later if the right decisions were made. It's a very slow learning curve, learning process to figure this stuff out when you're working on big projects over the, that type of time frame, right? Um, it's much more helpful to get this information in advance and know some of these planning frameworks so at least you have some guidance on um, the decisions to make so that the end of your project can turn out much better. So let's go through each of the frameworks here. The first one being planning. And there's 10 project management frameworks that 
are part of the planning framework. The first one is contracts that you see on the screen. Commissioning uh, really needs to be included in some of the upfront contracts that are prepared if it's in design contracts or construction contracts, or if those are the same and it's an EPC contract, contracts define the rules of the game. And sometimes contracts are used too often just to get the work started and uh, contract work to get the guys uh, on site to start the work. But contracts also need to be used to define the rules of how the project is going to be finished. And that's why a lot of the commissioning details need to be defined in contracts up front. This is challenging because this could be years in advance, but it's very possible when you have the right people involved early in projects to get that input into the contracts so we can also define how the projects are going to be finished. This includes the sequence of uh, construction completions. This defines the commissioning management software you're going to use and expectations of how groups are going to be expected to interact with your software, uh, the workflows you're going to follow, the sign-offs that are going to re be required, um, inspections, who has authorities for signing off a lot of, on these milestones. All that needs to be defined in your contracts up front so that there's no surprises at the end and everybody knows not only how the project is going to start, but also how it's going to finish. So the next one is during feed. Um, there's, we always talk about lessons learned on projects and we want to apply these lessons learned on next on the next project, right? You may have done lessons learned, but then they quickly get put on the shelf and forgotten about. Well, this is a primary function where those lessons learned need to be applied earlier in the project during design processes. The design teams that are working on projects, they're excellent. They they know all the technical details, but they may have not been involved in actually finishing a project during commissioning, right? So this is the opportunity to get the right commissioning experts involved during preliminary design reviews, during detailed design reviews, and get that those lessons learned from the end of projects back to the front end of projects and have that feedback loop so that we can constantly improve and learn and uh, incorporate the right things earlier in the project so we have what's needed later during commissioning. For some particular packages on the design, it might require even more review. If you get into some of the complex control aspects of projects or uh, process control narratives, you may need a series of workshops where there's even more input required from commissioning groups, from operations groups, to make sure that the right process control narratives are understood, that these processes can actually be used on a daily basis during commissioning and during operations, and uh, making sure that the, the individuals that are responsible for design actually understand the interpretation of how our process control narratives are supposed to work. So the next one is factory acceptance testing and integrated factory acceptance testing. And we've been doing factory acceptance testing for the longest time. And for some of the more simple systems, that's very well understood. If you have a pump and you need to run it at the factory for a few hours, measure three points on the pump curve, that's fairly well understood. When it comes to the more complex systems, say your control and protection packages, we need to be using more sophisticated approaches earlier in projects to integrate both the hardware and the software in the factory before shipping this stuff to site. A lot of projects might defer that and have software integrated in the control and protection cubicles on site for the first time. I've never seen that go too well. The protection cubicles themselves, the hardware might be tested in the factory, but the cubicles are actually quite useless without the software, right? That software component is a critical element to those cubicles functioning correctly. And we need to be testing those in the factory to know that they function correctly before they get to site to mitigate that risk and avoid those delays of debugging and testing stuff on site. I'll get, I have a case study coming up here. I'll show you uh, two example projects of one that did proper integrated factory acceptance testing and one that didn't, we can compare. So project systematization is a key component of our uh, planning early in projects. And like we mentioned earlier, this is important because this defines the work packages from a design perspective through construction and how this all aligns with our startup sequence later in projects. It's uh, the design would progress to a certain level where we at least have uh, a tag list of equipment, how this is divided up into various subsystems, how this is then loaded and modeled in our commissioning software, and then how these 
subsystems flow through the various workflows for design, construction, construction completions, and ultimately commissioning and startup. This is a critical aspect to flow through all stages of projects, and it's all based on how we systematize the project. So defining our gated commissioning workflows is important as well. How are we going to um, progress each subsystem through the various stages of pre-commissioning and commissioning? What are the gated milestones that are going to be reviewed? What are the sign-offs that are required? What is the specifics of achieving each of these milestones so that there's no surprises and no confusion? This all gets defined and then loaded into our commissioning software. So of course, then our commissioning software defines that fundamental tool that is used to manage commissioning. Once we've completed all of our planning aspects here, then the commissioning software is used to model our commissioning processes that we've set up here, all of our commissioning workflows, and manage the subsystems through each workflow. Our commissioning software is an important tracking tool from a database perspective, but it's also an important communication tool to convey to everyone on the project where things are at, what's outstanding, what needs to be done to progress through each of these milestones so that nothing gets missed. As well, also in our CMS software, we're going to model our commissioning sequence and our commissioning schedule. Once we've completed a lot of these planning elements, then this all gets sequenced and this all gets scheduled into our software and modeled within our commissioning management software as well. So that when we're tracking subsystems, when we're tracking deficiencies, they're all tagged and linked to a specific point in our workflows and in our sequences. So we know exactly what needs to be done and when it needs to be done. With our gated commissioning workflows, there's several forms and certificates that are required. So what forms are going to be used on the projects? Who's signing off these forms? What certificates are issued? Who has signing authority? And how are these sign-offs uh, implemented in our commissioning workflows to sign off on each milestone? And when I say forms and certificates, it's not necessarily uh, a paper form that you would think of. All of these forms and certificates are modeled in our commissioning management software uh, to sign these items off and progress through, through the sequences. Of course, our checklists and procedures, we need to have these prepared in advance. There's no time during on-site commissioning to be thinking about or planning how we're going to do a lot of these activities because it's just too fast paced, right? So we need to have all our checklists prepared in advance, all our commissioning procedures to verify our process control narratives, everything ready to go before on-site commissioning starts so that we have the paperwork and uh, we're ready to strictly focus on execution during on-site commissioning. And all of these checklists, all of these procedures, inspection test records, it's all loaded in our commissioning management software and tracked for completion so that nothing gets missed. And then not because it's the least important, but um, we have to focus on safety as well, right? There's no point in doing any of this if it's not going to be done safely. We want all of our commissioning processes, all of our startup processes to be done safely. And the commissioning team is relied upon heavily to make sure that these processes are safe. As a lot of the equipment experts and experts that have done these startups in the past, we need to be making sure that we have the right safety processes in place for PSSR reviews and uh, readiness reviews to make sure that all of our activities are taking place safe so that everyone can celebrate the success of the project at the end. So our next framework is our construction completions. And there's two frameworks involved here. You may be familiar with punch list walkdowns and uh, categorization of uh, punch items that are identified. Well, this is formalizing that process in the software in how punch list walkdowns are completed for each subsystem how punch items are identified, how they're categorized as type A, type B, type C, and then how these are loaded and tracked in the software to achieve um, each milestone in the project. Then the second framework is achieving our subsystem static completion. This is the critical milestone that defines the end of construction from a static completion perspective and hand over to uh, the construction, uh, the commissioning team for uh, continuing on with uh, pre-commissioning. So Jeff, PSSR is pre-startup safety review. It's uh, just the formal process to document. These are all the things that need to be complete. These are all the potential hazards that could exist. Um, uh, the checklist to review. And then for big startups, probably formally reviewed 
in a, a boardroom or meeting environment to make sure that everything's ready, everything is complete, that nothing's missed. Most importantly, getting everyone's input, um, not just the people that have identified hazard, hazards, asking everybody else, are there any other hazards that have been overlooked that we need to be aware of? to make sure that everybody's had input into this process, everything is safe and that we can in fact proceed with startup safely. So that the last point I was saying there is static completion. It's a critical milestone. And on a lot of projects, it's very vaguely defined, right? Is complete construction, go test some stuff. And that's where things get missed. But um, making this much more defined in our software is what is static completion? Because everybody's definition of done always seems to mean something different on projects, right? But when you define your static completion, exactly what means uh, what is done uh, from a physical equipment perspective, from a documentation perspective, then everybody's clear on what that goalpost is, exactly what needs to be completed and get sign off for that static completion so that we can move on to commissioning, um, knowing that uh, construction activities are complete for contract and we can move on to the next next stage. So then our last framework here um, is really the on-site commissioning and startup process here. And there's six frameworks that are involved here. The ones you would be familiar with are um, your, your pre-commissioning activities, of course, your equipment level testing to get just your, say, your pump up and running, not necessarily interfaced with everything, but uh, equipment checks during pre-commissioning. Once we've gone through and checked each individual piece of equipment, we'll move on to subsystem level testing, which is our commissioning, where we're expecting a lot of the equipment to work together as a subsystem or system, uh, verifying our integration to our control systems that uh, the pump, the motor, the, the power system, all of that equipment is functioning as one subsystem in the project to verify at a commissioning level. Once we've gone through that, um, everything's feeding together. We're building up the system. We can move into our startup phase, which is introduction of process fluids for the first time or first energizations of, of high voltage equipment, um, moving into performance verification, trial operation, and handover at the end of the project. So those six frameworks make up uh, the portion of the on-site commissioning and startup to uh, complete our overall integrated commissioning framework here um, that we're following using software through all stages of the project. All right, so how's everyone doing? That was a lot that I went through there. Take a deep breath and uh, let me know if this is making sense in the chat. All right. Now, what I've described there is the framework that is proven of how to complete capital projects. This is the only framework that will allow you to meet your project in service date. Um, project teams, of course, will try a lot of different things, but none of them actually work, which is why nine out of 10 projects are late and over budget. What I've described is the only proven and reliable way to methodically complete complex projects, period. For all types of projects, for all industries, this is the project management framework that's followed by all other projects that are successful. This is the proven method to complete projects. If you're not doing this on your projects, this is one of the main reasons likely that your projects are late. Some people ask at this point, well, what about Scrum or what about Agile? What about advanced work pl planning? Uh, those types of other aspects you may have heard about in uh, some of the project management literature that you've seen. And none of those really apply to commissioning. Those tactics can be used during design and they are used during design or construction and, and they definitely apply. But when it comes to commissioning, commissioning requires a different thought process. Commissioning requires a systems-based approach to completing projects. And this is, I think, why there's confusion between some of these other tactics and how to complete these project management philosophies for commissioning. The systems-based approach that is on the screen is the methodical process to complete projects. Don't get distracted by that or other project management jargon. It's not actually what you need to complete projects. Focus on the fundamentals with the systems-based approach that we've discussed so far in this presentation. 
So let me know in the in the chat. I see some smiles. I see some thumbs ups. This is all making sense. Have you used parts of this on your projects? Is there some parts that you've used and maybe others that you haven't? What's been your experience with this on projects in the past? Let me know. So for some context, let's look at a possible timeline. The bulk of the effort in overall commissioning is during the commissioning planning frameworks. So let's say you've got six months of commissioning at the end of your projects. You may have 18 months prior of planning activities that are required in order for that last six months to be successful. Or maybe on a smaller project, you've got two months of commissioning at the end of your project, and maybe you've got 10 months of planning in advance. Um, and it's going to depend on when your feed processes start, but that would be the intention is that prior to your actual on-site commissioning, you're starting that much in advance. If it's 10 months, 18 months, two years in advance um, during your feed processes to make sure that once you get to on-site commissioning, everything takes place smoothly. So when commissioning project management frameworks are established early in projects, the last part of your project of completing construction and commissioning becomes much easier. I'm sure you've heard of the 80-20 rule. When it comes to managing commissioning, 80% of the work is done during the planning stage. And this is often what's missing on projects. When commissioning gets tucked under an existing group under design or construction, they've got their primary activities to focus on, right? They've got their design activities to focus on. They've got their construction activities to focus on. And that's what they're going to do because that's their area of expertise. And that's what they're going to focus on. When commissioning is tucked under one of those other groups, commissioning gets forgotten about, right? Because they're going to focus on their primary activities. It's, it's not their fault. It's just that's their primary role. They need to get that done. They need to get design done. They need to get construction done that they're going to worry about commissioning later. And that's often why that upfront 80% of the work can get missed. When that 80% is missed or it's done wrong or it's not done at all, the last 20% of your project will be a nightmare. That's when you end up with cowboy commissioning. It's just too fast paced. There's too much information and you can't possibly keep your head above water if you haven't done the upfront effort to make sure that your commissioning is going to be successful. So are these timelines making sense? Would you agree that 80% of the effort is required upfront during planning to make sure that the last part of your project is successful? That's been my experience. Um, let me know what your experience has been. Now let's take a look at a case study. Let's compare two projects that were done roughly about the same time in Canada. These are Now, these are big projects. If you work on smaller projects, these lessons learned still apply. If you're working on a $5 million project, if you're working on a $5 billion project, uh, these lessons still apply. First project is Bipole 3. I was the commissioning manager for this project, and the project took place between 2015 and 2018. Uh, roughly the same time on the eastern coast of Canada was the um, HVDC uh, LIL, the Labrador Island Link. And they started the project in 2012, and they just recently completed the project earlier this year in 2023. Now, there was lots of things wrong with the uh, Labrador Island Link or the Muskrat Falls project, and it actually resulted in a public inquiry in 2020. You can read all about public inquiry at muskratfallsinquiry.ca. But there's one thing I want to highlight is the difference between the two projects in the approach to integrated factory acceptance testing, the software development and testing in the factory. So on LAL, um, this is a headline from the CBC uh, from last year, March 2002. And the headline is talking about software struggles that are continuing to persist. Um, they've got a consultant speaking about Muskrat Falls completion and that it's impossible to predict. Ouch, not a good headline. Um, and then in June 2022, they're still having software troubles and they're um, blaming this as one of the main contributions to a $260 million uh, cost increase um, on the project. And then even just earlier this year, this is a headline from March 2023, they're still having issues with the software and they're still having issues with uh, the ability to do full power transfers um, 
down the, the HVDC link. So definitely not good headlines in the media. When the media latches on to these types of things, then when things get out into the public like that, yeah, then it could get pretty ugly, right? So um, you can tell by those headlines that they're still working on the software for the HVDC link for LIL as, as early as this year, right? We can only assume that uh, their factory acceptance testing only consisted of hardware checks of the controller protection cubicles and didn't have that fully integrated software component. If it did, then they wouldn't be seeing these software issues so late in the projects, right? Contrast that to our approach on Bipole 3, we had a six month period of dedicated integrated factory acceptance testing. There were 60 cubicles that were required on the project, uh, 30 in the Northern terminal and 30 on the Southern terminal. And we had all 60 of these cubicles in the factory in Germany. They were all wired up together, all um, powered integrated, both the full HMI systems. And we could simulate the entire 2300 megawatt power transfers on the systems. This was done all 18 months in advance of our project and service date. Um, I was working with an excellent project team and they had um, a, a very proactive approach to offsite testing and it was hugely beneficial to the project. There was of course, lots of pressure to release those cubicles from the factory. The construction guys wanted to get those to site. They wanted to start the installation, but we knew that we had to take this proactive approach because there's lots of complexity in HDV, HVDC stability controls that we need. We knew that we needed to test. So 18 months in advance, we planned to have the systems in service on July 1st of 2018. And because we took this proactive approach, we were able to hit that project in service date. Our project in service date was July 4th, 2018. So a very successful approach to the project. And when we were going through commissioning, we knew that those cubicles worked because they were fully tested and integrated in the factory. When we were going through commissioning, we were really just looking for wiring errors. And while we found a few of those, the software systems in the control and protection cubicles, those all worked. Those were all excellent. Only some very minor things that we had to change. And this is one of the major lessons learned that I've taken away comparing these two projects is that your integrated factory acceptance testing is essential to de-risk your project and do the integration activities earlier in your project rather than defer everything to later in the project. Um, it's very risky to integrate some of these complex software control systems for the first time on site um, during what's supposed to be your pre-commissioning, commissioning, and startup phases. Instead, you're doing a lot of the uh, development and debugging that should have happened much earlier in the project. So we've covered a lot of good information today. Let me know in the chat if this is making sense. I see some totally agrees, excellent presentations. Glad to hear that. I like that feedback. Thank you very much. So if you're going to go forward on your projects, can you please promise me that you'll begin with the end in mind You'll prevent commissioning from being a sub-activity to an individual group. You'll have everyone involved and you'll stop using paper and spreadsheets on your projects. To correct these three mistakes, we've discussed how commissioning can be simplified into a three-part project management framework. Commissioning frameworks to plan your projects, construction completions, and your on-site commissioning and startup frameworks. Does this seem doable on your projects? Can you go implement this? And if you're ready to go implement this on your projects, what's gonna be your first step that you're gonna take? What I've given you today are the project management systems and controls that successful project teams use to complete commissioning and meet deadlines. What I've given you today are the commissioning project management frameworks required if you want to avoid costly mistakes on your projects, you want to avoid cowboy commissioning and the scramble at the end of your projects, you want to avoid missing your project deadlines, and you want to avoid the consequences of a failed project. Think of all those CBC headlines. I don't want those on my projects. Of course, we all want this, and I'm sure that you want to get it right the first time. You want confidence with commissioning rather than gambling. You want to skip the 10-year learning curve and get your project started the right way, and you want to be able to work on the biggest and best projects. Absolutely. Begin with the end in mind, for sure. So right now, you have two choices. 
you can go figure this stuff out on your own. And this is a totally legitimate way to go. This is what I did. I took the last 10 years to figure this stuff out and apply it on my projects. And you can do the same. You can roll the dice and see how your projects turn out. And you can learn, unfortunately, have to learn a lot of these lessons the hard way. Or option number two is you can apply these CSU best practices right now. I'll give you the systems and controls you need to successfully complete project commissioning. You can skip the 10-year learning curve and you can avoid the consequences of a failed project. You can avoid those CBC headlines that we just went through. It doesn't look very good on your resume when it shows you have a failed project and you're searching for uh, your next project. Everybody's going to ask what happened. You can set your projects and your career up for success right now. So does this sound good? Does this sound um, like something you want for you and your projects? If option number two sounds like the better approach, if you want to understand how these processes work before starting your projects, you want to get all the systems and controls in place for your successful commissioning, you want to get all the templates, procedures, forms, certificates, everything you need, you want to start with a subsystems-based approach on your projects through all phases. You want to get all the commissioning workflows you need, all the planning details that are required, the software to use, and how to get it all set up. You want to cut down the learning curve. Instead of many years, you can get this stuff all figured out in the next few weeks. And if you want everything you need to complete commissioning project management and get it all in one package, then I want to introduce you to our Commissioning Academy Integrated Completions Program. This is literally the most comprehensive program for commissioning project management ever created. Maybe there's something else out there, but I've never been able to find it. This literally closes the gap that exists on projects. Remember when we went through that org chart earlier in the project and the gap between project management and technical commissioning? This is what we've put together to fill that gap and help people understand how to properly plan and execute for commissioning. And this is the fastest method to get up to speed for what's required for commissioning project management. These are the processes that people and projects need to be successful with commissioning project management. This is the missing piece on projects. And these are the project management systems and controls to make sure commissioning is successful. Honestly, it's painful to watch people and projects struggle with this stuff because we know the solution. The answers are all right here. But without this, people continue to, to struggle on projects until they learn a lot of these lessons the hard way over 10 years on what works on projects. It drives me nuts. People don't need to struggle on projects. They need these commissioning project management processes to guide them to success. And this is the reason I created this program is to close the gap and stop people from struggling to complete their projects. This is perfect for people at all levels. If you're a project manager and you need to understand how to finish projects and to better know how to finish projects, um, uh, if, you're that, if you're in that project management role, then uh, this is important to know the frameworks that are required to actually complete projects. If you're a beginner, you get everything you need so you won't have to make any mistakes. Or if you have a technical background on projects and you wanna move up in projects and take that lead or management role, then this program is your best option. You get a massive head start. Thanks, Jeff. Catch you in a bit. If you're uh, an intermediate on projects, then you get to fix your cowboy commissioning. Your projects are probably late and over budget, just like most are. The data tells us that. You get to fix your cowboy commissioning. If you're an expert on projects, then you can upgrade your commissioning processes to the industry best practices used by all successful projects. You can fine tune your processes and make your projects even easier. I can show you how to do this all on your projects. It's super simple to get started. All you have to do is go to learncsu.com, enter your info, and I'll text you back right away. We can have a chat. You can get started in a matter of minutes. Super simple. There's two ways that we help you on projects. We have our Commissioning Academy training program. This is our signature training program. It walks you through exactly how to apply these commissioning project management processes on your projects. And this is a good option if you're an individual that needs to get this stuff figured out fast for the next project. We also offer consulting services for organizations that maybe need a bit more guided support. 
You get all the course content, plus I work directly with you and your project team to get this stuff implemented on your projects so you can have better project deliveries. I provide the guided support to implement this on your projects fast, and this is a good solution for organizations that must improve their project delivery processes for commissioning. Both options, you get all the information you need for commissioning project management, and since 9 out of 10 projects are late and over budget, this is how we help you and your project team improve these odds of completing projects. Both options also include everything we've discussed, plus, um, I'll get to your question in a second here, Temison. We do offer three modules on mechanical, electrical, and automation pre-commissioning and commissioning. Often people have a very strong technical background in one of the uh, uh, disciplines of commissioning. Maybe they have a really strong mechanical background, but they're not quite as familiar with electrical and automation or vice versa. We provide these three modules so you can get a flavor of all aspects of the projects and see how all these uh, subsystems integrate together. You get access to our checklist and procedure database. We have over 180 checklists and procedures in there that it's super helpful sometimes to start with a, a template that you can use as an example, modify it, make it specific to your projects. You get access to all those documents. There's several case studies in there that you can look through and see how this applies to projects. You get access to our forms and certificates library. For example, one of the first things you're going to need is a commissioning kickoff meeting agenda. Well, you just go into our forms and certificates library, pull out that agenda, maybe make a few minor updates to it, send it out to your meeting attendees, done. Move on to the next task. You get access to our private members LinkedIn group. Um, as you're going through the course, it's helpful to discuss with others, some of your peers that are going through this as well. There's people in there from all over the world. So you might also find someone that's working on a very similar project to yours and you can bounce ideas off them to um, maybe help you with your projects or help them with their projects. We are accredited with the EIC. And what this allows us to do is when you complete the program and pass the exam with an 80% mark or better, we can issue an accredited certificate along with the accredited CEU and PDH hours. This is all logged and uh, registered at eicregistry.com. So you can show others that you've completed this program and understand the commissioning process. You also have lifetime access. If uh, you're working on a project now, or say in a few years from now, you want access to the, the databases, the forums library, go back to some of the reference content, you can pull it up now, you can pull it up in the future so that you can use this stuff on your projects. This is literally everything you need to successfully complete your projects during commissioning. If you go to learncsu.com, um, remember earlier in the presentation, I said you can download the uh, CMS software list. The link is right there at the bottom. You can get access to the, the software list. Go check that out. Then you can enter your info. I'll text you back right away and answer any other questions that you have. So if you do have all this figured out on your projects, and this is exactly what you're doing on projects, then that's actually fantastic. You're on the right track. Please, please keep up the good work because you're helping projects succeed and you're part of the project leadership to make sure that commissioning goes successful. We need to improve project performance and you're one of the project leaders that are doing your part. Thank you very much. However, I know that most project teams have not figured this stuff out because the data tells us that. Remember, 90% of projects are late and over budget. So this tells me that most projects don't have this stuff figured out. So... If this stuff is all new to you, or you've been part of a project that struggled with commissioning in the past, or if you've been to this presentation a few times, maybe you've read some of our emails, you've taken the mini course that we have, or you're looking for more help, then it means you're still trying to figure out commissioning. It means you haven't been able to figure this stuff out on your own. And it's risky to your career and your projects to continue to try to figure this stuff out on your own. It's time to get support. Because this stuff is complex, it's not fair to expect people to just go figure this out, right? And it takes a long time to learn. It took me 10 years to learn. Now, if you do need support on this stuff, it, it doesn't necessarily have to come from me. You can get support from someone. You can Someone else can help you try and figure this out, but you do need someone to help you figure this stuff out because it's, it's specialized project management. It's complex. And... If this is something you want to do, then I'm sorry, but 
you're not going to get these specialized skills from a few Google searches or a free webinar, right? It's going to take some, some dedication. There's likely a reason you're here. It's because you do need to stuff, figure this stuff out on your projects, either for the benefits of your projects or for the benefits to advance your career. It's likely one of those. However, you haven't been able to figure this stuff out on your own. Now, I do think it's possible for people to figure this stuff out on their own. I did. I took took me 10 years to figure this stuff out. And uh, and you can certainly do the same. It's just that there's too long of a learning cycle, though, right, to figure this stuff out. Um, when a project can take two or three or four years, it can take that long to see if what you did two years earlier was actually the right thing to do to make commissioning successful. And with a two to three year learning cycle, it can take several of these cycles to get this stuff figured out and get it working on your projects, right? 10 years is not uncommon to get this stuff figured out. It's just not an efficient way to learn. The lessons are hard and slow to learn on your projects, costing your projects lots of money, let alone the damage to your career when you don't get this stuff right. A better way, of course, is to get this stuff all right here. And it's why I created this program. When I went looking for this stuff years ago, it didn't exist. And I can still see today that people are, are struggling to apply this and figure this out on their projects, causing projects to be late and over budget, right? To bridge the gap that exists on projects is exactly why I created this program so that you can get everything you need with just the click of a button and figure this stuff out all much faster. Don't waste the next 10 years trying to figure this stuff out and make many costly mistakes along the way. Costly impacts to your projects, to your career. Think of the Muskrat Fall projects. It's it's too easy to get sucked into that path and have uh, a bad finish to projects when these project management processes for commissioning aren't be apl being applied properly on your projects. You can get everything right here. Projects are, are brutal out there, and I, I want you to be successful with this stuff. It's it's cutthroat out there. The construction industry is, is brutal. It's a $14 trillion industry, and everyone's trying to get their piece of the pie, right? There's people out there that do this stuff all the time, and they definitely know how to exploit the system when they can see that there's something that's not being done right. I don't want you to get taken advantage of with, it, with this stuff um, when it's done incorrectly on projects. You can accept my help, and I'll help you figure this out so your projects can be much more successful. So for those of you that are ready to get a massive head start with commissioning project management, this is where you go, learncsu.com, enter your info, and I'll text you back right away. We can have a quick chat. And I'll get you hooked up fairly quickly. Um, just a few things to, to confirm with you and uh, ask about some of your projects to make sure this is the right fit. Um, submit your info at learncsu.com. We'll get that figured out and get you enrolled right away. All right, cool. So how's everybody doing? Um, I've got some time for some questions. If there's any more questions, you can enter them in the chat. Um, while you do that, I will get some of your questions answered. So to answer your question, Tamison, I do know that that's the first question I often get is what of the cost of the course? Um, when it comes to commissioning, there is really no one size solution that fits all, right? Every project is specific and needs a a specific application of these commissioning project management processes to be successful. So that's why I just want to have a chat with you um, when you enter your information at learncsu.com. Enter your information. We'll quickly have a chat. I'll, I'll confirm a few things with you, and then I can easily tell you all the information you need about course costs and everything to make sure this is a good fit for you. And we can easily find um, a payment off option that that works for you and and fits your uh, objectives. So yeah, submit your information at uh, learncsu.com and I'll get you everything you need. So another question I often get is, maybe you're still not convinced that the these systems and controls for commissioning can actually help you and your projects. I, get, I hear people saying that, yeah, but uh, I got to hire one or two more people and now I got to get software. These are additional costs. How is this ever going to save me money? One thing I can guarantee though, is that without this, it's a gamble. Um, you have no idea how your project's going to finish and you're just rolling the dice. Your project may be successful, but the data shows that it probably won't be. And that's not good for you and your projects. However, 
When you implement these systems and controls for commissioning, you're much more likely to achieve your project objectives. You can actually have the ability to control your project outcome during commissioning. You reduce the risk of your projects being late and over budget. It's just good risk mitigation for both you and your projects. Some people ask, well, I don't need this. We have consultants looking at commissioning. They'll fix everything. They'll figure out what we need, right? And while I'm sure you do have very smart consultants involved in your projects, and they are probably excellent at providing the technical aspects of commissioning, I can almost assure you that you're not getting the commercial and project management aspects of commissioning that you need. It's not their role, right? They understand technical commissioning, but they don't necessarily have the expertise in commissioning project management or some of the commercial aspects that need to go into commissioning for success. So let's have a quick chat and see if there's any gaps in what you think you're getting from your consultant. Let me know, contact me at learncsu.com. Um, if your consultant has everything under control, that's awesome. Um, if there's any gaps in there, I can help you with that and we can see if there's anything else you need to close there. So people sometimes ask, why do I need commissioning project management. This is just project management stuff. I'll go get my PMP instead and uh, figure this stuff out. If you go look at any of PMI's information, it's pretty light on details on how to finish projects. Uh, a lot of what you'll find there is how to start a project, right? Your project charters, your cost estimates, your schedule preparations, some of your uh, monitoring processes. But what PMI has put together is covering all types of project management, right? Not just capital projects that are um, covering either IT industry projects or civil projects that don't even have any commissioning. So they've got more of generic information in there when it comes to completing projects. They talk about closeout, but there's nothing in there that's specific on the project management processes that are required during commissioning to complete projects. This is the stuff I help people with, um, that gap that's not in uh, PMI when someone has their PMP. This is what's missing on projects, and it's it's no wonder it's missing on projects because it's not necessarily taught in any of the project management literature that you've seen out there. You actually need the full picture, right? You need um, PMI's information um, when you're getting your PMP on how to start projects, but you, equally as important, you need to know how to finish projects. So. To help you with some of that PMP stuff, I've actually included five PMP practice exams in the course content. Uh, you can use these to, to help you or get a flavor of what's required to start projects. Or if you're going to go write your PMP, these are a great resource. The best way to pass the PMP is to just write a lot of questions. So there's five PMP practice exams in there that you can use, use as well. Um, so with that, then you can see what is required to start projects um, from this PMP information. And then you can also get all the information that we provide in our program on what's required to complete projects. Another concern I hear is, yeah, this all sounds good, but maybe someone's not sure that they can actually um, implement this within their organization, right? There's too much bureaucracy. How are you going to get everybody on board with this? Organizational change is difficult. I get it. How are you going to get others on board? But if you don't get this stuff figured out, other people working on other projects will, and you'll quickly get left behind. But that's exactly why I created this program is to help you make this transition, to help you understand, to help other people on your project understand what is this project management framework and how can it be applied within your project delivery processes to make completing projects much easier. This is the gap that I'm um, trying to fill here and help other people understand this to help with that organizational change and make it much easier so you can improve your project, project processes and have better outcomes on your projects. I hear, hear people say, well, this doesn't apply to our projects or this doesn't apply to our industry. We do things differently. We do commissioning differently. And I always tell these people, of, of course you do. All projects do commissioning differently. Every project has a unique set of circumstances, right? Even a very similar project within the same industry, there's no two projects that are identical. The breakers to close, the valves to open, they're always project specific. The technical commissioning aspects are always different. There's no two projects that are the same. So commissioning is always going to be different on every project. However, 
the systems and controls for commissioning the project management aspects, they're always the same, regardless of the technical details. And this is what is missing on projects. The same steps need to be taken for everything we've discussed today on all projects. It's always the same risk-based approach to manage commissioning so that your project-specific testing goes much smoother. And lastly, people often ask, well, I want to learn this stuff so I can lead and manage commissioning, but I don't have the time right now. Um, the project world is always busy, right? When you're working on projects, there's never a good time. You're always busy. Even when you think, well, I'll just finish this project and after this current project, uh, I'll have more time. That never happens. <laughs> um, you're always busy uh, and you're always on to your next project role sooner than you think. At the end of projects, the good guys are always scooped up for the next project. Um, projects people are in demand and I don't see too many people sitting around looking for things to do. They're always busy from project to project. That's why we designed our program to be part-time. You can complete it in a few hours, evenings and weekends over our, uh, several weeks so that you can get this information now and not have to delay till later. There is no better time to get this stuff figured out than when you're busy. Complete it now when you're busy. That way it will be much easier when you have more time later if you do have um, some more time. All right. So those are some of the questions uh, I get asked. If there's any other questions, um, please shoot them in the chat. We'll get them answered. Um, any other questions you want, please go to learncsu.com. We can have a quick chat and I can answer any questions that you have and see if our program is a good fit for you and your projects and we can get you enrolled pretty quickly. I'm here to help you lead managing commissioning for your projects to benefit your career, to benefit your projects, to benefit the global challenges that we all face together on completing projects. Um, a few more things before we can conclude. Watch your email. If you would like to join our next webinar, um, I'll send you the link. You can click to join. And uh, I do these webinars every Friday. So join the next one on Friday if you want. If you want to come on back and have more questions, by all means, do that. Also, if you enjoyed this webinar and you think there's someone else you work with or someone else on your project team or that you know that would benefit from hearing this commissioning message, then by all means, um, let's send them the link to next Friday's webinar. I'll send you an email. Uh, there's a link you can click on. You can enter their email and then they'll get the, the Zoom webinar for uh, next Friday's presentation and they can check it out. Uh, lastly, I'll also send you a recording of this as well. Uh, Zoom takes a little bit of time to process it, but once that's ready, probably tomorrow, I'll send that out to you. You can check out the replay, pass it on to anyone else that uh, you think should hear this information and will help projects succeed with uh, commissioning project management. Awesome. I appreciate everyone's involvement here. Uh, lots of good questions, lots of good discussion. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks for joining and I hope to chat to you soon. Stay safe on your projects. Have a great day.